Well, uh, there, there are different views of biological origins within the religious community, within the Christian community, within uh, uh, the broader theistic, uh, people who hold a theistic worldview. And one, the, one of those views which is different than the view I hold is the view of theistic evolution. And that's the idea that, that God in some way used the evolutionary process uh, to create life, um, to create the new forms of life. What, wasn't that the church's sort of original approach to when it came up? Just Not really, what, because no? the evolutionary theory is really only dates from the 19th century. Okay. And so um, there are figures I'm like, sorry to interrupt you. Well, that's okay. Um, in any case, the, so theistic evolution is sometimes a little bit difficult to define because there are many different versions of it. But roughly speaking, it's the idea that God used the evolutionary process to create. And it sounds kind of innocuous, it sounds sort of commonsensical, but it has three main problems with it. it has, there are scientific problems associated with it, there are philosophical problems associated with it, and there, are, and there are theological problems. The scientific problem is very simply the one we just covered, and that is that if the mutation natural selection mechanism, the main mechanism cited by evolutionary biologists, is itself, it itself lacks creative power, then it's incoherent to claim that God used that to create. Um, and, and in other words, the theistic evolutionists have been, have been involved in kind of trying to reconcile what they regard as mainstream evolutionary biology with their religious beliefs, not realizing that mainstream evolutionary biology itself is beginning to recognize problems that, are, uh, that, that make that synthesis unnecessary, okay? And I would, I would say actually that for at least 40 years now, maybe longer, I mean, in 1980, Stephen Jay Gould said that neo-Darwinism is effectively dead except as textbook orthodoxy. People have known now for a very long time about the problems associated with the creative power of natural selection and random mutation. I, list, I, I, develop, I explained several more than the ones we talked about already in this interview in, in Darwin's Doubt. Um, and this Royal Society Conference and other events of biologists who call themselves sort of third way. They don't want to endorse intelligent design, but they know that neo-Darwinism is dead. One of the biologists at the, at the conference in London said, Crit criticism of neo-Darwinism is now so early 90s. In other words, it's passe even to criticize the theory. So there's a, there's a disparity between what our students are be being presented and what even people in the field of evolutionary biology know. All of which is to say, <clears throat> why are prominent professors at Christian colleges or prominent scientists associated with groups like BioLogos working so hard to try to reconcile their Christian or theistic beliefs with a dying theory, with a, th with a theory that lacks a, a creative mechanism for explaining the origin of new forms of life. So that's the scientific problem. The logical problem or the philosophical problem is that Darwin conceived of the mechanism of natural, natural selection acting on random variations as a purely undirected, unguided process. And the reason for that was that he was trying to explain the appearance of design in living organisms without invoking an actual designing agent. And so he came up with this mechanism that was a kind of designer substitute mechanism. Well, if the mechanism of mutation and selection is natural as opposed to intelligently guided, and that's how it was formulated, then how is that logically compatible with the idea that God is guiding the evolutionary process? If God is guiding an unguided process, it's no longer unguided. Now, if you ask the evolutionary biologists um, if they think that the mechanism is guided or unguided, they get famously, or, or sorry, if you ask the theistic evolutionists if they think it's guided or unguided, they get kind of famously uh, ambiguous and will say, well, it might be guided, or, or they'll often say it isn't guided. If they say it isn't guided, they've got a flat out contradiction. If they say it might be guided, they have such an ambiguous theory as to not really warrant critiquing it because it's not really a theory at all. It doesn't, it's not really telling us what is the true causal agency that's responsible for the origin of new forms of life. And then I would argue there are theological problems, but we can set those aside for now. Yeah, it's, it's, but that, that's, that's a big argument among scientists and theologians, but uh, at least you both believe in God 
having some role, <laughs> you know. Well, and, th but th I, that's, I, I think the main problem with the theistic evolutionary position is it's not at all clear what role the theism what, plays. What, what role it is? Is that just a rhetorical add-on, or does, is God actually doing something that makes a difference scientifically? Right. And, and typically the theistic evolutionists will say, no, the, the design of the Creator is not detectable scientifically, which means that their science is identical to the, that of the, the materialists.